And thank you all for being with us. I see several familiar names there, and we're just so glad you all are taking some time from your afternoon to be with us. And for those of you who are not chamber members, we want to say welcome to you as well. When uh, we started down this journey with COVID-19, uh, we wanted to be sure that we were able to get information out to the hands of those who we thought could use it, not only for what we're dealing with today, but thinking about what recovery looks like and how we might can work together to bring information we hope you'll find important and hopefully be able to use in your own business. We're doubly delighted today because Chris Donadio, who Jessica will introduce in a moment and who you'll get to know is um, an ambassador. He's a former ambassador of the year. Don't want to steal Jessica's thunder, but he's one, one of ours. And so we're just thrilled to have him present. He's also one of the best uh, relationship builders I know. So you're going to hopefully get some information from Chris today that'll be meaningful for you, not only hopefully in your business, but in your personal affairs as well. Um, I want to say big kudos to Jessica and to the team here at the chamber. Uh, we, it's been quite a journey and hopefully what you've been getting from us is a great deal of information to keep you informed. Uh, we're here to answer questions and we are here every day uh, right now remotely for the most part, but uh, we're here for you. So if you need something from your chamber, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We want to do whatever we can to help you not only survive this period, but thrive during it and beyond it. Uh, we are in this together. So anyway, Jessica uh, has done a great job of putting together some wonderful speakers and today's no exception. So with that said, if there's anything we can do, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And Jessica, thanks again for putting such a great uh, program together for us. Thank you so much, Pat. This has really been fun for me. Um, so I'm going to introduce, oh, Zoom instructions first. I think I'd have this down by now. Just a reminder for the questions for the presentation, if you have any questions while Chris is presenting, please put them in the chat window and I'll go through them and ask them to him when we're done. If you don't see the chat window, hover over your screen, a bar will pop up at the bottom. You can click the chat button and the chat window will come up. If you're seeing video panels on top of what Chris is sharing right now, that uh, our logo in the first slide, you can go to your, again, hover over and, and up towards the top, there'll be view options. And if you click view options, you can click hide video panel and that way you, they'll be removed and you'll be able to see the slides full screen as they are. If you have any questions, again, put them in the chat and we'll be happy to answer them. Chris, thank you so much for presenting for us today. I'm really excited for this presentation and tell you a little bit about Chris. In the middle of the second act of his career, Chris has been with Litco Manufacturing for nearly 20 years. His first act was a fulfilling career for a single guy, then a young married, selling advertising in many forms, newspaper, radio, which is where he met his wife, Kelly, then concluding his broadcast advertising days in television with an ABC affiliate in Northeast Ohio. The bulk of those years were spent in the fascinating world of radio, creating theater for the mind. Reducing their work down to the ridiculous, Chris and his colleagues would joke when asked what they do for a living, oh, we sell puffs of air. Now, he sells the bags that contain the air, namely inflatable dunnage airbags and corrugated void fillers that Litco Manufacturing produces here in the Carolinas. These dunnage materials, as they are called in the packaging and transportation industry, are used to protect pallets of products of all kinds, uh, foods, consumer goods, raw materials used in industry and more. Pallets of products that are shipped being shipped across the country and around the world. I had a picture to show you, but my computer won't let me access it right now, so I cannot share that. I can send it in the uh, follow-up email for everyone to see. Remaining connected to the many customers he serves is the hallmark of his work. The miracle part of staying in one place for so long and keeping the same phone number, Chris states, is that people keep coming back to me for help, even if it's been for three or four years since they've last needed something. Some customers have remained loyal for up to 18 years. One prospect would call at the beginning of their busy season every year, but would not purchase. Finally, after 11 years, they made their first purchase. Chris has one patent and three federal trademarks on file at the United States Patent and Trademark Office and one more trademark pending. Chris is happiest when making connections, is extremely grateful to serve as an ambassador, and as Pat mentioned, he was a former ambassador of the year, and is blessed to be part of his Union County family, also known as your Union County Chamber. Chris, thank you so much. Jessica, thank you, and Pat, thank you as well. Um, it's just an honor to be here. It's an honor to get to present, 
Uh, I've got a few of my uh, colleagues, coworkers, I think in the uh, chat with us in the virtual meeting and an old high school friend of mine. I'm glad to see that he joined as well. And there may be others joining uh, just to kind of, I asked for a full critique after this. So hopefully mm -hmm. I did okay. And those speech skills from high school are still in tune. So, but um, while we were, uh, while Pat and Jessica and I were uh, first coming on to the meeting, um, I'm gonna address a couple of things before I get into um, what I wanna talk about, the five points. There's gonna be five points that I will make and I will recap all of them at the end. But the three of us were just dialoguing. These are really challenging times that we're in right now. We're all under stress and we probably don't even realize how much stress we are under. Um, and an example was given where a salesperson had made a call and it was not the appropriate time. And they got upset because the person that was being called upon was not receptive. And they were telling them we were up to our eyeballs in COVID-19 protocol and response. And I had said in, in our banter, the three of us, that you know, instinctively when you're in sales, when you're a driven personality and your, your job is to go grow the business, get more you know, increase for the company, it's, it's innate. And right now we're going through a very unusual time to where we don't know what to do with that skill set or with that natural instinct that's within us. So I suggested that if you have that urge to want to sell and you can't because um, wisdom would prevail and say, let's not push and try to introduce to new, new uh, customers, a new vendor situation, get an accountability partner, get someone that you can talk to that you can commiserate with, say, yeah, I can't, can't call anyone, I can't do anything. And hopefully as we go through today's virtual meeting, I will be able to give you some things that will put yourself in check without having that accountability partner. So with that in mind, we will, uh, we will get into this. But once again, Pat, Jessica, thank you very much. Jessica is our Director of Programs and Events, by the way. And of course, you all know Pat as our beloved president that I like to refer to her as. And what they are doing behind the scenes, Pat, Jessica, Debbie, Kim, and Nancy, it's an amazing amount of work that they're trying to provide for us. And we'll get into that into this presentation. They're trying to give as much value added as your chamber for all of us members as they can. And it's a mountain of work, but there's a lot that we're about to embark on. And I think it's only gonna get better. Person first language, uh, 14 and a half years ago, my wife and I had a baby girl, beautiful baby girl. She has Down syndrome. We knew nothing about that. And as we did our research and learned what our daughter needed, we learned person first language. And I think it applies to what we're doing here today. Um, if we all adopt a person first language in our relationships, in our homes, in our communities, and in our businesses, I think we'll get further, a lot further ahead. Um, if you put people ahead of things and tasks and goals, then your natural inclination is to think of the person first before that task that you have to get done today, before reaching that goal or that quota that you need to accomplish for your business. So that's why I like to use person first language. I take it to an extreme, it's just my personality, but um, when I'm taking notes or if I'm putting an appointment on my calendar, I will write the person's name first, then the name of the business, and then the task we have to do. And it's just a way for me to get in the mindset that that person comes before everything else. So our first point is to observe with our eyes, but don't speak yet. So um, highly attuned people, I love watching people that are like this. It's not natural for me. I have to practice it and think about it. But there are some people that will walk into a room, into a situation, and you see them just sort of sitting back. And they're looking around, and they're observing, they're seeing who's in what groups, who do they want to interact with. Some people do it out of service because they want to reach out to those that maybe are standing alone and they want to draw them in. Other people are looking at it from, especially at a chamber event, is who do I need to engage with first and foremost so that I can advance the cause of my business. So it's really amazing to watch these people at work. When I walk into a chamber event, it's like the first person in my face, like I block everyone else out and I'm locked in for however long we're in a conversation. So it's something that I need to practice doing, but practice this and you'll see where you can maybe get a better uh, value out of your chamber membership by connecting with people that are meaningful to them and meaningful to yourself. And um, if we all do this after the COVID-19 shelter in place is lifted, it would be hilarious because we'll all be standing against the wall looking at one another. <laughs> Just kidding, Pat. We shouldn't do that. And don't worry, Pat, you have your ambassadors that are trained to go out to the person standing by themselves and pull them in. So you've trained us well. Okay, uh, the next thing you'll see is a highly, tuned, uh, highly attuned customer or customer service person will prepare before engaging. And I do this in my sales calls naturally, and we really need to do it now during these COVID-19 days, as I'll call them. You need to think about 
what you're going to say before you reach out to someone. Think about what they might be going through in their day, what their business entails. Is this a good time to reach them? What's the best way to reach them? And we're gonna cover a couple of those things too. I've developed a habit over the course of my career that you should start adopting now and carry it long after the uh, shelter in place is lifted. But um, my uh, work environment, and by the way, I refer to myself as a white collar, blue collar worker. It's a name that I gave myself. Salespeople are traditionally white collar workers, but I get to put on my steel toes and hard hat and PPE and walk into factories and see how stuff is made. So that's the really cool part of my job. And when I'm in the factory setting, most of the time environments that I'm not familiar with, you have to walk between the painted lines, you have to be watching for tow motors moving. And so there's re it's really hard to try to pick up nonverbal cues, to hear everything that's being said. I'm wearing earplugs, there's equipment and noisy machinery happening, happening, and I can't always get everything out of the conversation. So when I finish my call, I do a data dump. I just sit in my car and I write feverishly everything that I can remember. I will write uh, key people's names that I met in, on that call. I will write the ancillary people's names, the people in the fringes that no one pays attention to because they are sometimes your best coaches towards your next sale. Um, <clears throat> if the contact that I'm working with mentions family members' names or a sports figure, a sports personality that they like, you jot that down too. All of that factors into future sales calls and making those connections down the road. And I, I will refer back to my notes before I walk into my next call, remembering some of the things that we talked about. And I, I reference that as well. <clears throat> so when I first started, the way I did this, and use whatever tools you have available, my dad gave me a gunmetal gray recipe box. It wasn't really big at all just enough to fit three by five index cards in. And I would write notes on them. I would write everything about the people. I will remember names of people, but faces sort of fade in the background. So if I go into a, a business three or four times in a short period of time, I might remember them. But if it's longer span of time and I see them out in the public somewhere, I'm like, I know that face, but I can't place where it is. So I make little detailed notes and, and do uh, mnemonic uh, uh, devices to try to help me remember their names. And one day when my wife and I were first married, we were early married and she was looking through my index card. She says, what, what is this? She says, bearded fellow, woman with glasses on chain. And I says, honey, that's how I remember when I go in to see them next time. That's how I can make that connection. This guy was clean shaven. That guy had a beard on. Well, now fast forward a few decades and look what's happened. I've become that bearded fellow bespeckled with my glasses on a chain. So anyway, <clears throat> I'll remove this prop because I only need those for reading. But these are the kinds of things that you've got to have fun when you are making your sales calls. Make it fun for yourself and, and take a light approach when you're going into people because people want to do business with people that are like them and they want to do business with people who are upbeat or, or forward thinking or just make them feel good about themselves. So I've advanced since then. I'm definitely computerized all the way up to the point now where I take my notes with my stylus and I can't really see the screen, but you can see my chicken scratch on my Galaxy Note 9. Whatever you have, just write on. Sometimes I take scrap pieces of paper. I'll write on anything that's handy. And uh, this way it helps me remember. So. so anyway, observe. Observe with your eyes. The next step is to listen with your ears, but it's still not our turn to speak. So we just need to listen. And we're going to do a little exercise here in a minute. But before I go into a call, before you pick up the phone during these COVID-19 days and think about how you're going to reach out to someone or craft that email or send that text message, think about what you want to say and how you want to say it. I close my eyes. I'll sit for 60 seconds, 120 seconds, no more than that. And I'll think about the important questions I need to ask. Visualize how that call might go. Then I think about their possible responses to my questions. Then I'll think about how am I going to respond to their responses? And if we slow down a little bit, and I am fully convinced that one of the greatest benefits during this very strange and unusual and difficult time of suffering is um, we're learning how to slow our pace down a little bit. It was getting a little bit too fast for all of us to process. And I hope that we're using this time to think about when things open back up again, how are we going to be different? How are we going to be better? So as you anticipate what, those anticipate what those responses might be, then you'll be better equipped to handle objections or to, uh, to work towards the next step in, in your goal, which is helping your customer 
get what they need for their business. And in turn, you'll be helped with your business. So now we're gonna do this little exercise um, because I'm a firm believer it's harder to trick our ears than it is to trick our eyes. And if you don't believe me, just look at what magicians do. They use sleight of hand. So you're watching this hand up here while they distract you with the other hand, that's where they perform their magic. But if we get attuned to listening with our ears and practice listening better, you'll hear things that you've never heard before. It's amazing, I've done this before. So at this point, I'm just gonna ask everybody to close your eyes. Some of you don't have your video on, so it doesn't matter. Don't be uh, bashful about this. We're gonna try to make this a little bit interactive as we move forward in the session. I'm gonna read you an email that I sent as soon as the shelter in place uh, orders were starting to be given from state to state. My corporate office for my company is up in Ohio. And I thought, things are gonna be different. We better start thinking about what we need to do now. So I wrote an email to the president of my company and my director of sales. I'm gonna read that email to you. And at the end, I'm gonna ask two questions. And I'm gonna have you type in your chat your answers to that question. It's, there's right and wrong answers in this one too. So I'll just let you know, but it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. This is just for fun. And it's to get us listening a little bit. So here goes, this is an edited version. Dear Gary and Jeff, update on corrugated pallet projects I've been working prior to COVID-19 and now because of COVID-19. I continually look for opportunities to increase sales of Litco's void fillers. Uh, I should go back and say, I'm sorry, the title of this email, I titled it Guns, Butter, and Pallets. <laughs> Guns, Butter, and Pallets, okay? So I'll go back to that first paragraph. I continually look for opportunities to increase sales of Litco's void fillers, guns. The custom made packaging is my aim for sales that are hard for the competition to take, butter. And now with the urgency thrust upon us with this coronavirus crisis, I'm looking for the quickest sale I can close, having to educate the consumer as little as possible and casting the widest net to attract a large audience with repeat needs for everyday items, pallets. New pallet customers will lead us to selling more void fill and custom made packaging solutions. As shortages of wood supply issues for, as shortages of wood create supply issues for wood pallet manufacturers, we can supplement shippers needs and close new business with a Litco made corrugated pallet. First prospect agreed to test and sample two sizes of pallets to supplement their wood pallets. They've had a hard time with wood pallet suppliers, getting the right pallet with no poplar wood, no knots in the wood, with countersunk nails, a large number of the wood pallets they receive have caused punctured drums and hazardous spills in transit as a result. And I skip on to the third prospect, <clears throat> a COVID-19 food access response map by Rivendell Farms. Litco is listed in, as the only packaging supply company for food transport, including corrugated pallets, void fillers, airbags, and anti-slip mats. This food map was already in the works prior to COVID-19 and is about to receive approval from the health department. Sincerely, Chris. Okay. My two questions are, and you can answer this in the chat. What product do I sell that I likened to guns? That was the very first product I mentioned. It's not a common product, so it might be a little harder to answer, but what product do I sell that I likened to guns? And I can't see the chat right yep. now, so I'm just letting, Jessica, I see you smiling. <laughs> no, nobody answer. has, uh, nobody's offered a, a thought yet. No idea, we've got a no idea. There's one in the audience that better get this answer right. And if not, I'm calling you afterwards. I'm not gonna call out your name, but you know I'm, you're getting a call. We've got airbags, filler, Corrugated pallets, shipping cartons, packing material. Very good. Filler is very close. There's a, there's a uh, descriptive term before filler. What kind of a filler? Void. Bingo. <laughs> Give them the prize, Jessica. Void filler. We've got a couple of void fillers coming Excellent. in. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, here's the bonus question. <clears throat> you can just answer yes and no. And then for the extra bonus, I'm going to have you type in what it was. Did I make a reference to Lord of the Rings in that email? Yes or no? Got a no and a yes, mm -hmm. and a no and a yes. 
Yes. No Star. No Star Wars. <laughs> you can you can type in the answer if you know what uh, what reference to Lord of the Rings that I made. Rivendell. <clears throat> Bingo. Yes. <laughs> and just as a note, that is talk about connectivity and the benefits that I received from the chamber. That is both something that I can do community service right now during COVID-19 here in, in Union County, and it's also a future prospect for me. Rivendell Farms of the Carolinas was at Wingate University's Collaborative for the Common Good, and when they did the afternoon session, deep dive sessions, they called it, I sit at, sat in on that round table and made some great connections, and there is a food access resource map that is about to go, it's live, and we're starting to, I'm helping them promote it. And this resource map will let people know, other than the Second Harvest food banks uh, in, in the area here, where there are small churches that have food supplies and resources. And we're going to start promoting that. But this is how you make yourself productive during these times when you can't do your regular selling, is you look for these value-added engaging opportunities. There's some real, real needs in our community here of people that um, they're having a hard time getting food. And I know some people that are on the front line serving where... Uh, in the early days, they were packing food boxes with seven-day food supplies. They reduced it to five-day food supplies. And the very sad part is there is vegetables that are rotting in the field right now because of the trucking industry. They cannot get the trucks into the, to the farms to get them out and get the food to the people. There's a lot of things that are getting stopped up that normally flow. Um, farmers, dairy farmers are working twice as hard. They have to go out and milk the cows. And then what they're doing is, uh, because there's such nutrients in the milk, but there's no, there's no way to get it to market right now. They're dumping them in their fields so that it can grow fertile in, in, in the farmland. So, so there's a lot of things that we can do if we can't sell and we can build those connections for the future. So we're gonna move on to the, uh, the Hallmark question, Jessica, that you ask in your teaser, as far as uh, this, is, this is, if you don't get anything else out of this, number three, when it's your turn to speak, what's the one question you should ask? And this is my favorite question. I use it all the time. I just used it last week, and I will uh, give you an example of that in a minute. And that question is, how do you like to be served? And it gets people to stop and think, and I ask it on a regular basis. Um, people are just so accustomed to doing things the same way. The reason I ask this question, and the example I'll give from last week is, Whenever there's a change in guard, as I call it, whenever a purchasing agent leaves and there's a new one to come in, or a person on the shipping docks leaves and there's a new shipping manager, they, first of all, are different personalities, have different needs, they view life and view their business differently, so they're going to need things different than what you're used to supplying to them. And second of all, almost as a rule of thumb, they have to prove their worth to their company uh, of the promotion that they just received, and they're going to start shopping for new vendors. And so as soon as I learn of a change, I'm on it like this. I make sure that I let them know who I am, lay back, let them know I'm here for them. But also I ask this question, how do you like to be served? And it really gets some great responses. And they'll tell you, people will tell you exactly, here's an insider tip for salespeople. They'll tell you exactly what they need for you to sell them. They don't want you to sell them. But if you ask them, how do you like to be served? They're going to open up and say, well, you know, don't email me. I get so many emails. Or if you're going to call, call me in the afternoons. I get inundated or my, my focus is really intense first thing in the morning. They'll tell you what they need and just make a note of it. Write it on your three by five index card, bearded fellow, and, uh, and then you can apply it in the future. So this is an example of an email that I sent. Um, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'll get to that one in a minute. <clears throat> we have to recognize everyone have different preferences. And also, this is just a little something for fun I threw in here. Knowing the five love languages comes in handy. So if you uh, are familiar with the author, Gary Chapman, he wrote a book called The Five Love Languages, and it's basically how people give and receive love. We're, we're wired differently. And that can be applied in our business life as well. How do we um, give to people that need something from us as we're serving them in business, and how do they receive at the same time? So the first language is called words of affirmation. There are verbal people that just want to hear, boy, you're doing a great job. And you can bring words of encouragement, either in writing or when you're talking to them on the phone or when you're there in person. The second one is acts of service. <clears throat> they just like you to do little things for them, do extra things for them. That's the value added. And during these COVID-19 days, if you um, can maybe go online to a, a chamber business that has uh, products that they sell online 
and pick up some little things and just mail it to them. Or if you can, drive by and drop it at their doorstep and let them know that you're coming by or let them know that you left a little, uh, a little uh, gift there, you know, as, as far as something like that. I'm mixing my acts of service and my receiving gifts. Those are two different languages there. So, but there's a lot of little things that you can think thoughtfully through and be creative and have fun in the process while you're doing this. Uh, one of the things that I did with one of my coworkers who lives here in Monroe is uh, it was like, I think March 26th, it had been a few weeks since we were like all sheltering in. We knew we couldn't go see customers. And so I did a little drive by. I pulled in her parking lot. I called her on her phone. We waved to each other. I shared it with the rest of my coworkers that Andrea is alive and well. Uh, some of you in the chamber know Andrea. She's been in our community for years. And we just talked a little bit and it just picked up our spirits. And when everyone else in our group meet chat from work saw that we were connected that way, it picked up their spirits a little bit too. So, and so we've gone through four of the five love languages, words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time. And if you know the five love languages, some of you are probably scratching your heads going, how are we gonna get by on this one? Physical touch, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to dialogue about that when we opened up for questions, because this is a serious point. When we get back together, it's going to be different. If you're very demonstrative like me, I'm from an Italian heritage, Italian background. We hug all the time. We're pinching the cheeks. We're doing that kind of thing. But even if you're not that way, instinctively, you're going to want to reach out your hand and give a handshake. We need to think about this. It's going to be different. Right now, we don't have protocols in place. Um, it's going to be awkward. So just be prepared for that. But we will get together again. The chamber will all meet. We'll have a, a whole bunch of wonderful programs. We'll all have a lot of energy and be happy to see each other. But we need to think about how we do that. And uh, for those of you like me, I'm very much a physical person. Make sure you've got a family member that can fulfill that quota. You know, somebody that you're sheltering in place with or somebody that, you know, is close to you that you can do that. Because it, studies have shown that there's healing properties in the physical touch. That's why physical therapists and and other people, you know, in the, in the healthcare and medical field uh, rely on that. Um, so in any case, this is something that maybe we can talk about. Maybe some of you on the webinar today have some ideas and we can bring that up in the chat or Jessica, if we can open up mics, if someone can raise their hand through Zoom and you can open up their mic and, and we can dialogue about that. So this is the email that I sent and we're going to skip past that point. Uh, just recognizing that everyone has different preferences in communication. This is what I send to new buyers or shipping managers. I also recognize everyone likes to be served in different ways. Let me know your preferences. I'll reach back and check your inventory at set intervals based on what you tell me. Happy to serve you however you best like to be served. Moving on to why we're all here, the strength of your chamber. And believe me, the ch your chamber staff is working feverishly to try to make the chamber relevant to you during these times and to try to keep you connected and to try to give you valid information. And as we can see, we need these interpersonal relationships to merge with good data. But I don't know about you, I am getting inundated with every hotel that I've ever stayed at, every business I ever walked into. These are our protocols to clean our business. That's nice. I trust you're cleaning your business. And when I feel comfortable, I will stay with you again. But at this point, we have to consider people over data. And lately, we've been running down a path so hard that we fall in love with data. We don't need data relationships. We need to relate to people, we really do. So this is how our chamber is relevant for us. Write in your planner every day, make it a reoccurring appointment, a repeat appointment, go to your chamber website every morning. It's important you do this because the ladies in, in, on staff at the chamber office are gathering data. They are attending webinars through the US Chamber of Commerce. They are combing through regulations from our Union County government, from our North Carolina state government, regulations that are coming in from the federal government, they're trying to manage a massive amount of data and assimilate it, boil it down, break it down into bite-sized pieces for us so that we can be current what's going on. And things are gonna open up at some point and I get a, a sense that some things are gonna start to open up soon. I know that my family members, some of them have started to get called back to work. So go to the website to find out what you need to do to be in compliance, what you need to do to be considerate and compassionate towards people and doing things the right way. So as I mentioned, uh, there's many facets of what we need to know in the chamber. You will find on the website and from these connections, these uh, moving forward together webinars, which is excellent. One thing that's on the chamber website, I'm the sixth in the line of speakers on the moving forward together with your chamber. 
There's five other excellent topics that are posted on the site that I recommend you go. They're about an hour long like this uh, session is. And uh, go review. There's workers' benefits. There is um, how to manage social media. There are a lot of great videos that you can pick up on. And that's why we're here, to give you value for your chamber membership. And also, there's going to be more virtual events. Uh, new, new programs are being planned, and we'll roll them out. What they look like at this point, we're not sure. But also, uh, I mentioned the point about um, what's going to be coming down from our, our government offices, what we can and cannot do. So we need to do that. Finally, we get to pick and choose our value added, what we offer. Number one, don't lay all your value added cards on the table all at once. I know you want to be helpful and say to people, here we are, let's go, what do you need? Fan out your cards and pick a card, any card, don't tell me which one. That'll confuse your customers and you won't have a reason to call again soon. So please plan carefully a series of communications and think it through. You can, you can think about what you will say and when you will say it and how you will say it, what forms of communication you will use. You can make a phone call, you can do an email, you can send a text. I rotate those three repeatedly. If I've reached someone uh, on a voicemail, I don't give them a voicemail the next time. I'll shoot them an email the next time I call. Sometimes some people I have texting and I know they're okay with me using their mobile phone. I'll shoot them a quick text because I know they want it in bite-sized pieces and they'll get back to me, either a quick answer or I know they saw it and they'll respond back. I use LinkedIn quite a bit and that's something that maybe I can answer some questions in our open format. Um, if there's some little tricks that you use, I do not have LinkedIn premium. Um, my company has not subscribed for that. I haven't asked it. I see that maybe in, in time that might be an ask I need to have uh, or a thing I need to have because uh, then you can open up LinkedIn message to anybody. But with my connections, I will use LinkedIn messaging. And even if you want to connect to someone new, I'll show you a little secret here in a bit of how you can message somebody that you're not a connection with to try to get them to connect with you, but be polite and respectful and relevant in that case. Send a note through the U.S. mail. I think that's awesome. And of course, other is, um, uh, I'm just looking at the time. I'm gonna skip the final couple of examples I gave so we can open this up. But when we talk about what other forms of communication, that's where I wanna hear from you. I'd really like to hear what you have to say. So in recapping, observe with your eyes, listen with your ears, ask how you like to be served, proactively utilize your chamber benefits, and thoughtfully choose what value added, the what, when, and how best to communicate. And with that, I thank you very much for being active and attentive listeners. I'll turn it back over to Jessica and uh, she can open it up for questions. Are you muted, Jessica? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Um, originally, I wasn't muting myself and then I realized I needed to. So then I have to remember to unmute myself. Thank you so much for that presentation. That was a lot of really good information. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask a first question just because I know it. <laughs> so while folks are gathering their thoughts, I know you, you, you excel at using LinkedIn relationally. Can you share a couple of the ways you do that? Great. Um, the easiest way, if you're not fully uh, aware of, you know, if you don't know someone that well, look at their profile. They'll tell you much about them. And there's a common point that you connect with. Did you attend the same university? A lot of times LinkedIn will send you connections that you went to the same university. What common interests do you have? So if you don't really know somebody, um, you can just open it up with a, hey, I see that we both, you know, like disc golf. It's the first thing I thought of. So I don't know if anyone has disc golf on their, uh, on their LinkedIn profile. But um, make that connection point and then throw it in. I'd really like to connect with you on LinkedIn. That's your ask. You don't ask them anything else. You just need to establish that relationship. Then at that point, maybe in a follow-up message, hey, I have an idea I'd like to get with you. What's the best way for me to communicate with you? And follow their lead on that. Did that answer the question? Yes. Um, this is a little bit... Um... So how do you balance that? Because I, like, I've heard other people saying this about the kind of without being creepy, without being voyeuristic, or it, how do you kind of balance that? That's a good point. Um, follow your spirit or your gut instinct, whatever you want to call it. Um, just be sensitive to, and you know what? Don't be afraid. Sometimes you might step over that line. We all do it. You know, if you step over it, you can always apologize and say, yeah, I should have thought that through a little bit better. So if you use that as your benchmark, you can always ask for forgiveness because, you know, 
Um, I didn't ask my coworker if I could share that picture in my uh, PowerPoint today, so I need to ask for forgiveness later on in case you <laughs> have to tune in. <laughs> do you have any tips on how to listen better? What you can do to train yourself to listen? That's better? a great question. You know, you can't obviously close your eyes when you're in an interpersonal one-on-one -on -one, face to face meeting. They'll think you're strange. So practice it when you're on the phone. <clears throat> When you're on the phone, they don't know that you're closing your eyes. And that's where I really get good. And, you know, I can tend to over, overdo it on taking notes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I just, I'll put my pen down and I'll just kick back. I'll get into a comfortable position. I'll close my eyes and I'll just listen. And then all of a sudden with your eyes closed, you're not filtering anything on your computer screen. You're not looking at the bird that's flying out your window. You're just actively listening. And when you develop that over the phone, then you can virtually close your eyes when you're with someone in person and practice tuning out all those other things. Mm -hmm. And you may need a focal point, you know, when you're looking at the person, when you're in a face-to-face -face situation, find a focal point that's comfortable and it's not odd for the person that you're talking with that will help you focus in and not look around. Cause I'm oftentimes, you know, I'm talking to people and, Oh, there's my calendar. Oh yeah. It was right. Easter. Easter was like eight, nine days ago, you know, and all of a sudden I'm off somewhere else. So just, do some visual things, some physical things that you can, uh, not in person, to practice closing your eyes and listening. I think that'll help. So you had mentioned the getting the emails from every hotel you ever stayed at and every store you ever walked near, <laughs> telling you all of those things. What would you recommend to one of them? So let's talk about a hotel. What's a better way like, that they could be, are you saying they shouldn't send those at all? Should they send something different? What's a better way to communicate? Okay, I'm going to go to an example that, that uh, because we're running out of time, but my brother and I were talking. He works at a jewelry store up in Northeast Ohio. They've got a database of nearly 10,000 customers over the years. It's, it's a heritage jewelry store that's been around for, you know, probably six or seven decades. So they started doing customer care calls, but they don't call it that. And I'm going to paraphrase in this, this communication that Jim and I said, they're reaching out to people. They want to let them know they're there in the community. Um, so when they start the call, they'll say, there's no sales lingo. There's nothing about customer care call in there. They're just saying, hey, we're just reaching out to you as a part of the TDFJ family. They refer to their customers as a TDFJ family. We, um, um, we, they want to gather simply on the call addresses or email changes or anything like that. That's fine. But as Jim writes to me, it has to be comfortably drawn from the flow of conversation. Some people are more skilled at that than others. This is why this might be a good time to stumble and practice with a few calls so that when you are in the next crisis that we may face at some point down the road, or when we're back to just regular sales, these are some skills that you're working on. And in the first few moments of the connection, the people's guards are up because they're trying to ascertain why, why are they calling me? So most importantly, as Jim writes to me, and I'm conveying to all of you, they should be made to feel that the only purpose of this call is to check up on them and see if there's anything that they need. It's about their well-being. And then they've done things. Uh, Jim and his coworkers have run out to the store and grab a meal for somebody or done some type of active service that has kept physical distance or even put them on a prayer list for one of them or usually they'll say a family member is, is they'll, they'll mention. But if there's any resistance by someone that picks up the phone, we just simply, as Jim says, we simply thank them for picking up and ask them to call us if you find you're ever in need. Try using that. You know, thank you for picking up the phone. If you need anything, call us. And that's all you have to offer them. And, you know, the staff at the jewelry store are at home using their personal cell phones to call out. So imagine these customers are getting, I don't know these numbers, you know, they're getting strange numbers. If they do happen to pick up, you know, uh, or no, a lot of times they won't pick up but they'll leave a voice message just saying, you're part of our family. If you need anything, call us. And Jim has said to me, he was amazed. They were amazed at how many people just pick up the phone to call him back to say, thank you. You know, people just want to know that they matter, that it's going to be okay right now. And I'm finding my customers that a lot of times I get 30 seconds or 60 seconds and I got to be off the phone. I ask an open-ended question and to my delight, they're talking three, five, seven minutes. I'll give them all the time they want. So if you get someone on the line that wants to talk, and you've got a stack of 20 things to do, push that stack of stuff aside and just listen to it. That was great. We have a couple comments here. Pat and Kim said, you know, that is a perfect example of your people first language. That's really good. Um, I have another question right before I ask it. I just want to remind everybody, if you all have ideas of how, what an other 
way to communicate with somebody besides Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, email, phone call, text. Um, if you have any of those, pop them in the chat and I can unmute your mic and you can share better. Or if you go to the, uh, actually, I'm not sure where the raise your hand is because I haven't seen it from the participant view in a while. So <laughs> um, there's a raise hand, but you can also just type it in the uh, chat. Yes, that works. <laughs> so um, we have a question. Do you have a good icebreaker for those instances where you have to cold call a prospect? Um, wow, okay, that's a good one. Uh, probably tell them a joke maybe or something. Mm -hmm. no. um, that was my Paul Lind answer for those of you that like the old Hollywood squares. Um, an icebreaker. Let me think on that one. Go to the next question. Sure. Sales calls visits are tough right now. Obviously, earlier this year, I'd started mailing an intro letter to a newly formed business introducing a new business mentoring program. This is still a valid service, but am I being insensitive to continue sending these letters now? Um, I would adapt that letter by saying I recognize that, um, you know, these are different times and I want to be respectful, but still send the letter with some type of a, uh, you know what, uh, how are they sending them? Is it by email or if you're doing it handwritten, boy, the old ink and pen, the, the handwriting is a wonderful way. That, that is such a personal touch. So if you're sending it by email, just write a handwritten note. I know these times are different, but I want to keep moving forward with what I do best and I'm here for you when you need it. And if you don't send it in the US mail, if it's sent electronically, just do it and make it very warm and personal at the very beginning of it and still send the letters. We still have to conduct business and people, we all want to get back to what's whatever normal is going to be for us. We want to conduct business right now. And you don't know who might have that time and who, who might not. So don't not send it, send it, but make it warm and personal and understanding these are unusual times. And when it's right for you, I'm here for you. Awesome. Awesome. Um, it looks like she was sending it through the post office, I think. So yeah, do that hand right on her by hand. I love writing extra notes on by hand. I do too, except when you have to do like 20 of them, because then folks number 17 through 20 get chicken scratch. <laughs> oh, mine's right from the first one. So. <laughs> All right. Um, don't have any other questions. Did anybody else have any um, thoughts of the other ways to communicate that they wanted to, to share? It's okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Chris, thank you so much for this presentation. It was very helpful. Thank you all for taking time to be with us today. Um, I don't have a screen to put up, but I will let you know our next live virtual meeting will be Thursday, April 30th, again at 3 p.m. And we're going to have that focused on, um, well, let me pull up this screen here so I can get all of my correct information. Um, we're going to have Sean Jeffcoat with... Um, Heartland Payment Systems, he's kind of talking about moving your business online, tools to help you diversify how you sell. With this outbreak, the idea of um, selling online and moving to online is we're seeing kind of now it's more important than ever. But how to deliver the products, how to set that up, how to kind of sell online is a challenge for a lot of businesses. So um, Sean's going to share some success stories and some examples of how to use some innovative tools to help you move online and make it more convenient for you and your customers. So again, that'll be Thursday, April 30th at 3 p.m. It's up on our website, uniancountycoc.com slash events. You can register there. Go ahead, Chris. Jessica, the icebreaker. I don't want to leave that question oh, unanswered. Thank you. I, this is just instinctive to me. You may not be comfortable with it, but when you open up, just say, you know, you ask the, the, the typical, how's your family and things like that. Is there anything you need prayer for? And just jot it down. Say, I'm keeping a little prayer list by my desk here and, and pray for the person. Don't just say it, but just keep a list. If you've got, if you ask it 50 times and you've got 45 prayer requests, um, you know, you don't have to pray for everyone every day, but just keep it with you. And when you think of it, go over and you just lift a few people up. We all need prayer right now. And that's the best icebreaker. People are really receptive right now. Um, and there's a way to do it and keep church and state separate. So. Chris, I think too, I'm sorry, that made me think of, again, conversations I've had with you. I think you, you, you would do a little research first as well, correct? Kind of part of that people first or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if you can find something other than what I just outlined for an icebreaker to make it personal, um, there's a lot of fun ways, um, you know, a good way to make it to make it more comfortable for the person that you're trying to make that cold call connection with 
is take a, a pot shot at yourself, say a, a, you know, a weakness you have or something like that. And then the focus isn't on them and the strange list. Hey, this guy's reaching out to me, figure out some way to say, you know, I've been trying to reach out to you and, and um, you know, I, I just couldn't figure out the best way. So I thought, let me just make a, a, a try and you tell me how you want me to reach you. That's just off the top of my head. So there's a lot of fun ways, fun things you can do. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.